In June 1940, the French government surrendered to Nazi Germany. France was divided into a northern German-occupied zone and a southern zone with a puppet government known as Vichy France. Until German control finally ended with the Allied invasion in 1944, many French citizens resisted the occupation. Historian Garrett Martin describes how French General Charles de Gaulle responded to the fall of France. Unlike a lot of his other sort of fellow members of government who advocated an armistice, sort of cooperating with the sort of German invader, uh, de Gaulle you know, really took a very ambitious move to seek refuge in, in London and to make a very solemn declaration on the 18th of June 1940 to continue the fight, saying that France had lost the battle but they had not lost the war. Unlike most of his colleagues, Frédéric Joliot-Curie remained in his Paris laboratory throughout the war, as Hélène Langevin Joliot remembers. My father uh, was a, a rich Bordeaux with uh, Kowarski album and uh, the paper of the experiment and the heavy water needed for uh, the the project of a, an atomic, a small atomic reactor, a pile, as it was said at the time. And uh, finally, he decided not to go with uh, Alban Kowarski, not to go in England, not to leave France, with the idea that the German will be defeated at the end, and that you need during that time to be able to maintain some science in France, to be able to do it again. Philip Halban remembers that his father, Hans Halban, was inspired by the British resolve to win the war. Going to England and seeing this admirable resilience, um, which clearly caught his attention, that he admired, and that to a certain extent, fascinated him. He was admiring the resilience and the, this is where it's going to happen. We're not going to surrender. We are going to win this war. Um, you couldn't not but be impressed and overwhelmed by that sort of attitude. 